Good morning. Uh, any government digital people in the crowd? No, just me. Okay, um, so I'm Tom. I'm from the uh, Ministry of Justice. Uh, I want to do this in two parts. I'm going to talk a little bit about our mission and then a little bit about the actual tech that we've been uh, deploying in partnership with AWS. Um, there seems to be a bit of a theme of history uh, today. So um, just in the spirit of competition, uh, the Ministry of Justice can trace back some of its court services to 1178 um, when Henry II set up the Commoners' Court. So I, I think we win. Um, just a quick overview of, of what we do. So, so we, we run 500 courts and tribunals uh, across England and Wales. Um, we have around 70,000 employees uh, uh, operating across around 800 to 900 buildings. Um, we also look after 83,000 people who are in our prison service, uh, and it's around 121 prisons. So we have quite considerable scale. And we also support millions of citizens who access our online services uh, every day. Um, I, I always wanted these sort of events to, to ask people to put their hands up to say who's interacted with our services, not, not gone to prison, but who's interacted with our services. Um, but, but the truth is, uh, most people interact with the justice system when something's gone really badly wrong in their lives. Um, so you might be a victim of crime you could, and you want to get justice. Um, or perhaps conversely, you've been accused of a crime uh, and you're, you're going to be, have your freedom taken away by the state. It's a really, really important moment in your life. Or away from the criminal world, perhaps you're getting divorced and you want the courts to decide who looks after the children and where they live. Th these are the most fundamental parts of, uh, of, of somebody's life, and, and these are our users. Um, so it's got a unique uh, sort of place to work. Um, I, I want to talk m mostly today about uh, one of our smaller agencies, the Legal Aid Agency, uh, but it's one of our most important ones. Uh, if you don't know it, the Legal Aid Agency is effectively there to make sure that justice is available for everyone in society, not just those who can afford it. Uh, and effectively, uh, they um, run systems uh, for around 30,000 providers, so legal, uh, legal firms, and have around 1,300 internal staff, and they make decisions about who should get legal aid and who shouldn't, which sounds terribly bureaucratic. So um, perhaps if I just make it a bit more real, um, I always like to tie it back to uh, a woman who lives uh, in East London, uh, called Lucy. Uh, East London, one of these areas that, that's quite um, run down, but now is becoming pr fairly uh, gentrified and hipster and, and cafes and, and so forth. Um, now, Lu Lucy lives with her three children. She's in her mid-twenties, and she's lived in the same flat for 10 years since her parents kicked her out because she got pregnant. Uh, the boyfriend is long gone, uh, and uh, she's living there with her children. She tries to work, but it's quite hard juggling, uh, looking after children and working. And at the end of last year, um, her landlord decided to get more money and decided to evict her. So Lucy, who has no money, no savings, she has loans uh, and, and plenty of debts, um, she had three weeks and she had to get out of her house. And the most likely outcome in that situation is that she would be homeless and her children would be taken into care. Now, somebody in that situation, they, they probably don't know about legal aid and the legal aid agency or the Ministry of Justice. All they need, all they know is that they need help. So I think, j just think for a minute how, how you would feel if you were in that situation. And, and the, these, are the, these are our users, so we, we don't innovate for competitive advantage or, or you know, to, for, to, to stop the challenges from overtaking us. We're a monopoly service. People have to use our services. Um, so th that, that's the mission um, uh, and sort of why we do what we do. Um, despite the importance of legal aid services, a few years ago we were in a, a bit of a, uh, a bad state from a technology perspective. Um, so we had an old on-premise data center with, with fairly aged tin. Uh, we have a mixed Oracle estate, like full stack Oracle applications, um, but, but a mixed estate. And we had frequent service outages. And crucially for people like Lucy, we also could only, uh, as, as, as uh, uh, the, the, the people before me from Sainsbury's were saying, we could only deploy a few times a year. So some services monthly, some sort of quarterly. And that meant it was very difficult to make services more easily accessible as more people uh, assume they can access services through their mobile phone rather than going to a physical building. So that was a real problem. We had to do something about it. And we had really strong backing from the top of the shop to, to, to improve. Uh, so what we did, um, we, we're lucky in UK government. We have a thing called the Government Digital Service, and they wrote a thing called the Technology Code of Practice, which is well worth reading even if you're not in the public sector. And point five of this, which is effectively a guide of how to do technology properly, is a fairly straightforward thing saying use cloud first. Now, lots of CIOs in government thought, perfect, we're already doing cloud. We have 
data centers with clouds in, uh, and they, they sort of doubled down on that, on that sort of uh, on-prem version of, of cloud. And, and they clarified that really this means authentic cloud. They mean the public cloud, and they don't mean hybrid. They don't mean on-premise or, or private deployment model. So we're not doing that. So what we wanted to do is move all of, the, all of these legal aid services to the public cloud, and we chose AWS. Um, I say all of them. The, the, the first decision we made, which was a horrible decision, um, was to move the re a couple of really, really risky uh, systems that were, that were quite fragile to like an IaaS, a colo uh, thing, rather than a public cloud, because we thought that was less likely to cause problems. It did not work. Um, so what we did is we moved the, the next 10, uh, which were pretty major, as I say, sort of uh, spark these also Spark-based um, Oracle stack systems, and we moved them to AWS, and we did one system per weekend uh, at the end of last summer. So lots and lots of work, but we moved them over. We chose a really quite vanilla um, uh, architecture in AWS. Uh, nine out of the 10 we, we containerized and, and moved through, and we're using uh, RDS for the Oracle databases. One of them we couldn't containerize because of Oracle support rules. Um, we'll, we'll get to that one later. Um, we've implemented uh, a little bit of DynamoDB and Lambda, but more for administrative functions at the moment. We're going to look at that more in the future. So where has this left us? Um, major savings on hosting. Um, it's, it's been really, really good uh, in terms of uh, our fragile public sector budgets. Um, we have automated patching and monitoring, which makes things much more stable, much more secure. There are baddies out there who like to attack our systems fairly regularly, so that's very important for us. Uh, and we have much, much better reliability. The, these people who, who access our services, as I say, they are at this sensitive moment in their lives. We can't just have days of delays while our, our caseworkers can't process their applications. And that's really why we're here. Um, next steps, we want to go a bit further than this. So, so we want to move to, this is a bit busy, but we want to move to a uh, Kubernetes, Kubernetes stack, um, uh, which is kind of more of a cloud native platform. Uh, we want to give uh, our developers tools that they're used to using, things like you know, GitHub and um, uh, Circle CI and things like that that they're used to using, and then we can swap those out as we go. We will be looking at other um, services as we go forward. We want to move this into a, in, in, into a cloud native service so that the developers can focus on fixing those applications, many of which are monoliths, and we want to break them down into microservices uh, so we can iterate more quickly. Okay, that, that's it for me. That's uh, hopefully a snapshot of what we're doing uh, over at the Ministry of Justice. We're hiring, so do get in touch if you want a mission. Um, and that's me done. Thank you. <clears throat>